conceptual people talk about all of the elements. special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that I run like Myriad Business Solutions the Visionetics Institute Odyssey Media Group I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston Dallas and other areas uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Rick Wallace. I hope everybody's having an unbelievable move into your holiday. Whether you are a traditional holiday person or you're a person that's not into the commercial elements and components and aspects of what goes on at this time of the year, I'm real big on love. I'm real big on family. Not real big or even on the whole commercial thing at all, but an opportunity to show love, an opportunity to show, show gratitude and show thanksgiving is always good for me. An opportunity to sit down with the people you care about, the people you love, and spend time with them. I think that's something that we can embrace no matter who we are. Uh, with that being said, look, I started this series a couple of days ago where we were going to talk about uh, the Black Gender War, and uh, I think I entitled that first video uh, the I Don't Need a Man and It's All the Black Woman's Fault Era. Um, and I pointed to some schemes, plots, machinations, uh, and systems set in place to disrupt, divide, and disunify black men and black women and I talked about many of the nefarious implications of sitting up and allowing ourselves to fall victim uh, to this. Before I get started, let me start with a disclaimer. As I talk about this, I am not here to diminish anybody's personal experiences or general observations. I'm not here to make a case for one group against the other. What I'm here to say is there's a lot of pain between us. There's a lot of heartache between us. And there's a lot of culpability, accountability, and responsibility that needs to be assumed on both sides. That's not why I'm here. Uh, I'm here because we have to wake up to a lot of the erroneous notions that we push as reasonable, as rational, as alternative options to the sustaining force of black love. One of the things, and I'm going to talk about this uh, in this segment, this is going to be a series, so we're going to talk about this a lot because we don't understand the importance of the black family. And I'm going to do in each one of these series uh, the best I can to impose upon you uh, at least the notion or uh, limited personal consciously understanding of exactly what it means to have an intact black nuclear family to rear children and to perpetuate ideas, systems, principles, values and that support our interests down the line. Here's what happens. Everybody's a little jaded. Everybody is upset because some somebody's hurt them, somebody's broke their heart, somebody's man out of them, mistreated them. Uh, male and female, uh, we've experienced hurt, we've experienced pain, we've experienced disappointment. What we cannot do is allow our limited awareness of how life moves and our limited, uh, limited encounters to set the stage of what's really truly possible. Because what I can tell you is there are good women out there, there are good men out there. There are people trying to find their ways. Most people 
are trying to simply figure things out. And sometimes in the process of them figuring things out, people get hurt. Unfortunately, that's where we're at because there's so much damage been, that has been done. One of the things I talked about is building. Everybody is looking for ready-made. You know, the, 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 the woman wants the ready-made man making six figures, seven figures minimum. When uh, my research and studies tell me that the median earning income for black men is 44,000, but it seems like on social media, everybody's making six figures and paying all the bills. Uh, I can do math and that ain't what's happening. But when you set that unrealistic expectation, you got a bunch of people who are going to be disappointed, frustrated, angry, and feel like they've been had. Uh, now, what I talked about is find a person who has the capacity. Everybody has potential. I'm not talking about simple potential. I'm talking about capacity. Capacity is potential merged with desire, willingness, and work thinking. Work, work ethic. Someone you can look at and say, this person is going to get there. And then you say, how can I help them get there quicker? And what do they bring the table to add to me? And you have the foundation on which to build. The idea of finding somebody that's already set. Number one is, if you find someone that's already set, he got it. He doing it. You didn't help him build it. It's not yours. It's his. Now, he may agree to share it with you, but you see so many prenups. Why? Because guys don't want to get married, then realize uh, a couple of years later that, that it's not going to work and end up having to give up half. So they do what? Prenups or they don't want to get married or all kind of different things. And this is horrible on both sides because you need that nuclear family to create power, strength, and project success into the future of our children. And so what happens is we go out there looking for it ready-made. And I, there was a person who I have yet to see have any positive things to say about black men. And there are black men out there too. They don't normally hang around here too often. Every now and then they'll pop in and try to call me a simp or whatever. Because I do go hard for black women, but I'm not gonna let black women just shit on black men. Like we aren't good men. There are some good men out there because we are out there. And because we do love hard and because we do make sacrifices and because we do take hits. Something I heard someone say um, a while ago. They said that when you got a really good man, you won't know how good he is until he's removed. When he's removed, you'll start to see all the stuff that he was blocking from hitting you, all the things he was protecting you from, the things he was absorbing and, and, and you weren't even aware existed. You will start to see that stuff come. And that's the truth. There are men out there like that. I love hard, I give hard, I sacrifice. I don't talk about it, I don't whine about it, I don't sit up and pump notches. If you don't bring it up and make it a point, I'm not gonna talk about it, I do it because that's what I'm supposed to do. Now, if you sit up and say I'm not doing it, then I'm gonna have to show you how I am. But if you're sitting up and you just look, I'm sacrificing, I'm supporting you, I'm speaking highly of you, I'm elevating you, I'm elevating our kids, I'm speaking power into our kids, I'm holding everyone accountable, nobody gets a pass, we all gotta stand up and be the best we can be, I'm not here to be easy all the time, I'm here to be a leader, I'm here to be a, pro uh, a, a protector, I'm here to be a provider, I'm here to be a priest, I'm here to be a prophet, to speak over you, and speak into you, and speak to you, but uh, and, and yes, I'm human. I, I, I come with fallibilities. I come with baggage. That's the thing. We out here looking for the perfect situation. We don't want nobody with baggage. Everybody's got it. Every damn body's got baggage, period. And so what you got to understand is how can I help them unpack their baggage? How can I help them lay that down? What do I bring to the table? We look so heavily at what we get. We never ask ourselves what we bring. And that's a problem. But Here's the thing, this person that never has anything good to say, I was talking about coming together, finding a person with capacity, which is more, again, more than potential. Capacity is potential merged with desire and work ethic and a willingness to execute it. 
that's capacity. Find somebody with capacity and find out how you plug in. Are you going in the same direction? Do you have the same passions? Do you have the same values? All these things matter. And then you would have, but this person said something that I want to address. This person says, I never advocate, advocate or promote black women marrying potential again. We're not talking about potential. Every person on this planet has potential. Born with it. Every person is born with a gift. Uh, Proverbs says, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Everybody has a gift. I have yet, with all the thousands of people I've worked with, that I've helped, that I've studied, that I've, I've observed, I've yet to come in contact with one that does not have a gift. The problem is we live in a culture that doesn't search for the gift, that does not seek to cultivate the gift. We look to fall in line and be a part of a system. We look to our school systems to educate our children, not into their gifting, but into a system that's going to literally suck the life out of them using their gift without ever valuing it. But the idea is you never you never promote marrying potential. Here's the problem. A woman who comes to the table and she is handling her business, right? She's got her own stuff. She's doing all that. And she's not one of those women who is talking about she don't need a man. She's got a lot of stuff going for her, but she realizes that a man plays a role that she can't feel no matter how successful she is on her own. So she's looking for this guy. Now she has the ability and the right based off of where she's at to say, I don't want to marry a potential. I want to marry a man that's along the line where I'm at. That's called being equally yoked. That's being connected with someone that's at the level you're at. Because if she comes along and she grabs a man with potential, nine times out of 10, she's going to overwhelm him. If he doesn't know who he is, and if he isn't solid in his confidence and awareness of who he is as a man, she's going to overwhelm him. Uh, because to get what she's gotten, she's had to take on a certain type of persona. And he has to have the strength of character, the strength of self, the strength of identity and knowledge of self to know, hey, look, this is who I am. This is what's going to happen. This is how we're going to do it. And still holding his role, even though he may not be contributing equally in certain areas financially. That's a rarity. So in that case, she needs somebody that can sit alongside of her, not be intimidated by her, not be uh, jealous of her, not be in competition with her, but sit up there and say, hey, look, I, I see everything you got. I love that. Appreciate it. That's great. But we can get more together. You've got to be in your role. I've got to be in my mode. We, we have to understand what our roles are. We have to come to an agreement of how we're going to move, how we're going to operate. What are my strengths? What are your strengths? How are we going to do this thing? And that's how you do it. It's not about marrying someone that just simply has potential and then giving everything you've got to it. This is about connecting with someone who is where you're at and going where you're going and saying, we are going to build it together. Then you have equal ownership in it. Now you have a stake in it. And when you have a stake in it, you are li a little less likely to bounce because it gets a little rough. When you have stake in, uh, a stake in it, now you're sitting up saying, hell, I helped build this. I'm not just leaving. You know, you, you, you're more apt to sit up and try to figure it out. But when you walk in and you're, he's already got it and you know, generally speaking, the system is literally set up for you to leave and take a significant portion of what he built before you got there, even if it's not community property. And then so now you've got a situation where you're not building together, you're not loving together, you're actually sitting up trying to be defensive and protect what you have from the person you should be able to trust the most. This system is very, very clever in how it has us pitted against one another so that we never start to work together. There's an idea floating around that's very, very selfish and, and, and it's very, very counterintuitive and counterproductive for the black people as a whole, uh, for our children to observe, but it's the idea, hey, it's all about you. You ain't happy, bounce. 
You ain't got to work on it. You don't have to look for ways to fix it. You don't have to challenge yourself. You don't have to challenge your mate. You don't have to sit up and look for ways to work. It, 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 they, don't, they don't have to be doing anything inherently wrong. They just don't. They just have to be not doing or doing something you don't like. And you just bounce. And what happens is we, we, we hide it under the, 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 the guise of self-love and self-care. But it's not self-love and self-care. It's a form of narcissism. It's a form of I've got to have it my way and I'm going to go do whatever i got to do. And the problem is it's never going to always be your way. So what do you do? You end up steady following the cycle of bailing out on things that could be fixed, that could be salvaged. That's a problem. And who benefits from the problem? That's another thing I ask. When, when I'm doing something, I'm like, okay, who benefits from it? Do I benefit from it? Do the people I love benefit from it? Do the things I'm passionate about benefit from it? Or do certain entities that don't hold me in high regard or have my best interest at hand benefit from it? The disunity between the black man and the black woman benefits them, not us. We can come up with a million reasons why we don't get along and why we can't do this and can't. Yeah, we can. You know, there's a lot of truth to a lot of the problems that we're facing. But let me tell you something. We're going to have to either repair it or we're going to crumble. We cannot sit up and spurn marriage. We cannot sit up and spurn love. Simply, it's not going to work. I've got a couple of errors I've got to get done, so i got to get out of here. But I just want to drop this in on you. We're going to keep talking about this. There's no easy way to do it. And as I get off, as you see at the beginning of the uh, video, the message, show some love, show some support, donate to the work we're doing. This is something that is so desperately needed on a national level. We need universal engagement in certain areas. This conversation we're having right now is an ideal uh, representation and example of that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get off, but show some love and support. Donate. The uh, link is in the description box. The cash app, the organization's cash app information is in the description box. Show some love. I'm about to get off of here. Until next time. Take care.